welcome students in this class we would take up for discussion sayed amanuddin's poem don't call me indo anglian before discussing the poem or before going to the details of the poem let us first look at the title if you take or if you look at the title of the poem the title of the poem says don't call me indo anglian now there's a negation and a strict negation by the poet that he does not like to be called by the term indo anglian so before taking up the poem let us know what the term indo anglian means the term indo anglian is used to denote indo anglian poetry is used to denote the poetic creation in english language by indians means indians writing in english language they were termed up as indo anglian writers or the poets writing in english language who belongs to india so indians writing in poetry in english language they were termed up as indo anglian poets now there were different names which were given to indians who were composing poetry in english initially they were termed up as anglo indian poets then indo english poetry indo anglian poetry indian poetry in english or indian english poetry so there were many terms to describe the poets and this actually caused certain reservation or certain objections by a sect of poets and the writers who didn't prefer to be labeled as indo anglian writers indo anglian writer term this was first used in 1880 by james payne to refer to the indians writing in english later on k r s ayengar he used it in a positive sense for the writers writing in english so this important body of english writing which is produced by indians when it is labeled when it is sectored when it is divided in the term of indo anglian poetry it raises a certain kind of identity crisis in the minds of the writers and this leads to the debate whether the poets they would uh, they should be termed up as poets or the writers they should be termed up as writers or they should be divided or they should be sectored as indo anglian writers now this is the debate or this is the question or this is the contention that sayed amanuddin he is raising in the poem don't call me indo anglian sayed amanuddin in his poem don't call me indo anglian he strictly rejects his identity or his labeling as an indo anglian writer he wants to be called a poet a writer but he does not prefer the term indo anglian he denounces being addressed as an indo anglian writers and why he denounces this term is because he considers it he considers this sector or this division as a hodgepodge of culture as not belonging to either of the cultures and he feels himself himself to be illegitimate and this actually hurts his identity and when identity it becomes an issue it is in crisis so this crisis the crisis of registering his identity as a poet as a competent poet is raised by say the manuddin in this poem don't call me indo anglian and the poet shows his pain the poet shows his dissent the poet shows his discontentment and the poet shows the results of being termed as an indo anglian poet so he does not understand the term he does not accept the term indo anglian and 
he classifies or he considers the people who term him as Indo-Anglian writer as the mistaken, misinformed folk. And when he is classified, he considers that when he is classified as an Indo-Anglian writer, when this label is actually given to him, he seems as a writer, as a poet to be cloistered, to be crippled and to be segregated from the group of poets and writers. So he wants to be compared, he wants to be grouped among the famous writers of the word, among the significant writers of the word and this segregation of being labeled as an Indo-Anglian writer abstains him from entering into that field. So he accepts that he is an Indian, his background is Indian, the culture the reflections in his poetry are all Indian, but he reflects it in a language which is English and language it should not be barrier in reflecting literature. So this dis dissatisfaction, this disappointment is remarkably portrayed by the poet and he, while he addresses the poem, while he writes the poem, he maintains a kind of a structure where the entire poem is written in small letters and there's only one word that appears in capital letters in the poem all through. By the end of the poem, that is his identity which he wants to be recognized as and that is written in bold capital letters P-O-E-T, poet. So this is the identity that he wants to be recognized with. So let us read the text of the poem and discuss the poem. The poem begins, No, I don't want to be a hodgepodge of culture, a confusion of language, a nullity of imagination, an abortive affair between an Indo and an Anglo. So the poem, it begins with the negation. No. So he is saying that means I don't want to be recognized as with this term Indo-Anglian, which to him is a hodgepodge of culture, a confusion of culture which suggests lack of belongingness to either of the culture. And Indo and Anglian also suggest or also signifies the confusion in language and it does not reach us to the quality of imagination, to the level of imagination. So it nullifies the imagination and it appears that he does not belong to either India or means he does not even belong to the category of English writers. And it suggests to him that it aborts his identity as an individual, an abortive affair between an Indo and an Anglo. So neither recognized in the Indo context nor the Anglo context. So he feels himself as illegitimate, born out of an abortive affair between an Indo and an Anglo, not sanctioned by either of these two cultures. I hate hyphens, the artificial bridges between artificial values in the name of race, religion and language. I damn all hyphenated minds, prejudiced offsprings of unenlightened soul. So this hyphenated existence of Indo and in Anglian, the term that actually gives him an identity of hyphens, hyphenated identity or hybridized identity is something that Sayyid Manuddin does not approve of. So he says that these hyphens, they are not natural. They are not the natural outcome of a language or an identity or a culture. These are artificial bridges and they reflect artificial values, whether they are in the name of race, religion, language and even hyphenated minds. They actually lead to various problems in society, 
in individual and he hates and he damns and he criticizes all these prejudices which these hyphenated minds they reflect and they result out of ignorant souls so this hybridized identity or this hyphenated identity prevents the recognition of the real poet or the real artist or the the real literary reflection of the poet and he does not approve of by this poem i denounce all labels and label makers i refuse to be a moon rock specimen to be analyzed labeled and stored for a curious gloomy fellow to reanalyze reclassify me for shelving me again so there's a general denunciation or there's a general hatred or there's a general objection by the poet for the term indo-anglian and the result it causes to the poet the repercussion it causes to his poetry so he is saying that means he denounces being labeled and he hates all the label makers who have termed this label indo-anglian for the poets like him because what this label ultimately does to his poetry or does to his creation is that it becomes a sort of a moon rock specimen and if it is segregated if it is segregated from the list of main books or main writings it is like a moon rock specimen which is labeled which is stored separately and some curious gloomy fellow reanalyze reclassify these writings and they are again shelved again where they do not find the large readers to read them and to classify them so he denounces these labels label makers and he declares that these writings they are meant for the general readers and they are meant to be compared with the general writings with the significant writings with the remarkable writings with the remarkable literature once you classify them it becomes like a moon rock specimen and if it is a moon rock specimen if it is like a moon rock specimen then it is analyzed labeled stored and again it is stored in the shelves or it is put in the racks again where nobody reads them otherwise his writings they are meant to be read they meant they are meant to be read widely or means they are meant to be criticized widely they call me indo anglian i don't know what they mean kaveri flows in my veins chamunda hills rise in my mind with stars afloat eyes of the goddess smiling on the slain demon vrindavan fountains sing in my soul so the poet he does not approve this term indo anglian because he thinks that why i am termed up as indo anglian my identity is very intact my belongingness to my culture is very strong so he says that kaveri flows in my veins my rivers my hills and my goddess chamunda hills goddess smiling on the slain demon he uh, the poet he belongs to mysore and vrindavan fountains they are part of my soul my upbringing and my thinking so the entire culture the entire tradition of india flows in his veins but i am not tied down to my childhood scene i have led languages by their ears i have twisted creeds to force the truth out i have burned candles in the caves of prejudice i have surged in the oceans of being i have flown across the universe on the wings of my thought so the poet says that they call me indo-anglian but i am rooted to my land i am rooted to my traditions and culture to my landscape 
but he is not confined to the childhood scenes and as far as languages is concerned he has learnt languages through the very natural process of listening to the languages so the languages that he know the languages in which he expresses himself are quite naturally learned by him we all know that listening is the first activity through which we learn a language so he is saying that he is not confined to his land to the childhood scene and he had traveled widely across the universe on the wings of his thought and the process in which he has become a poet or a literary artist or a writer he has burned candles in the caves of prejudice that really means that to get the truth out or to reach down to the philosophical understanding of being he has searched in the oceans of being to understand about the existence of man his place in the universe so this entire process of becoming a poet by keeping the prejudices aside by traveling or by understanding people cultures tradition languages he has become a writer or he has become poets and in that entire process he has twisted creeds twisted creeds means he is not bound to one creed or one belief or one religion or one race so that has given him a very wider outlook of the entire universe and that has broadened his thought and his mentality in that way he is basically reflecting about human life or human thoughts or his reflections in his poetry so this is the way he has prepared himself to be a poet they call me indo anglian the mistaken misinformed folk and class me with a small group of writers cloistering me crippling me so the complaint of the writer or the poet comes out quite vehemently quite strongly he says that means after laboring so hard to become a poet the term that is given to him is indo anglian and he considers those label makers or those persons who have given the term indo anglian as mistaken misinformed folk means the persons who have given this label they do not have the knowledge they are ignorant and they are wrong they are mistaken because such kind of labeling has just given him a class with a small group of writers and for a writer like him it has cloistered him it has crippled him and this cloistering this crippling or this limiting his talent is something that he does not approve of i would rather roam with kalidas and kabir or go on a spiritual journey with dante meditate with khayyam on the mathematics of existence or sing with galib the anguish of love or drown with lippo kissing the moon's reflection in the river so the poet's aim or means he wants that his poetry should be compared with sanskrit poet and dramatist kalidas or kabir or the persian poet khayyam or the urdu poet galib or the chinese lipo so the quality of poetry or the quality of literature it should be universal and the body of poetry written by poets to wherever part of world or universe they belong they should actually be taken up into one context into one body of writing so he considers that his poetry with his poetry with his imagination with his literary creation he was able to roam with kalidas and kabir and could go on a spiritual journey with dante who has 
written such a great account like Inferno and meditate with Khayyam on the mathematics of existence or Ghalib who was such a celebrated Urdu poet or even with Lippo who was reflecting in his creation his imagination to such a heightened level. But this term Indo-Anglian, it has crippled him, it has restricted him and it has not given him a way or a means to roam about or to enter or to travel with the significant and the great poets of the world. They call me Indo-Anglian. It's true, I write in English, dream in the language of Shakespeare and Keats, but I am not an Anglo, my friend. I am a poet. I have lived 40 centuries under various names. I am now a Manuti. So, the sense of loss of belongingness, which affects his personality, his identity comes out very openly in the last part of the poem and the pain is reflected with this term that they call me indo anglian means his imagination with his literary output or with his literary creation. He want to be termed or he want to be categorized with the famous poets of the word and to be categorized among the great poets but with this term Indo-Anglian it has crippled him it has restricted him so he accepts that it's a fact that he writes in English the language in which he expresses himself or his literary creations they are in English he dreams in the language which was the language of the famous dramatist and poet Shakespeare and the famous poet, English poet Keats. So he writes in the same language of Shakespeare and Keats, but that does not believe, uh, that does not mean that he is an Anglo. Certainly he is writing in English, but he is an Indian. So all those label makers, all those critics, he calls them his friend and he says that just understand that I'm writing in English. I'm writing in the language of the English writers, but I am not a mixture of Indo and Anglian. There's no hyphenated existence of mine. I am a poet. My existence is that I am a poet in whichever language I express. I have lived 40 centuries under various names. And then he clarifies that poets, they do not belong to boundaries. They do not belong to languages they do not belong to sect they do not belong to creed all the literary artists from 40 centuries or from before wherever they have lived to whichever part of universe they have belonged they could be under various names and to this day his name is Amanuddin so this segregation it should not be done with the literary artist, all of them, they should be judged, they should be categorized and they should be labeled as poets, writers, artists, critics. They should be given one term and this would be the best judgment or the best label. This is something what he wants to be addressed with and that the entire poem is written in small letters. This is one word that he has written in bold capital letters poet so this is the identity that he wants and he says that don't call me indo-anglian just address me as a poet the question of identity is most crucial to the post-colonial writers and they have raised the issue of identity again and again all through their writings so in the post-colonial era, era and 
the freed nation from this colonialism begin expressing themselves in the language of their rulers in the English language and once they are not accepted in the mainstream there's a general dissatisfaction which comes up from these writers because this raises the issue of identity and this uh, issue of identity it affects their personality it affects their writing and this identity this crisis in the identity it raises certain issues and is experienced and reflected by writers say the manuddin when he is labeled as an indo-anglian writer he does not approve himself with this term because he considers that this categorization as an indo-anglian writer just confines him or it confines his being as a writer the poem it begins with utter dissatisfaction and it shows the negation of the poet for this term for this label which is given to him and the poet he challenges he challenges this term and he does not want to be labeled with this term because accepting this term means limiting his capacities as a poet so by the end of the poet the poet just tells out the solution or just tells out his reason or the term that he wants to be addressed with and this is something the term which he wants to be addressed is the poet so the sense of loss of belongingness it affects his identity it affects his personality and the poet boldly affirms his identity as a poet by the end of the poem the term that he wants to be addressed with and this declaration of his identity gives satisfaction to the poet and this gives him a stature where his identity or where his personality would be universally acknowledged and in all parts of the world he would be recognized with one term with the other similar literary creative writers or his work would be recognized with the great literary creations of the world and this is something that he wants if we take up the form or the structure of the poem said amanuddin he experiments with the conventional rule of syntax and punctuation he takes liberty in writing the poem and this distinguished style of writing in which he expressed his moods his opinion his negation he has played with syntax he has played with punctuation all through the poem it is written with small letters and there are lots and lots of negative words that begins the poem and that runs all through the poem so the title of the poem it begins up with the negation don't call me indo anglian again hodgepodge confusionality abortive all these terms or the pseudo label these cloistering and crippling so all these terms they shows his disgust they shows his disapproval and disgust as a poet as a writer and very firmly he establishes his identity by the end of the poem by accepting himself or by just proclaim proclaiming himself with one word that establishes his identity and that identity is as a poet
Sayyid Amanuddin, born in 1934 and died in 1989, was a very influential poet. He was born and brought up in the city of Mysore and later he migrated to America. So this is the reason why his poetry or why his works, they reflect the blending of tradition and modernism. He is also an artist, painter, photographer, philosopher and English professor. There is a universal element in his writings which reflects human experiences of joy, happiness, love, pain, suffering and death and they philosophize upon the search for universal truths. Sayyid Amanuddin has published several books of poetry and he was the editor of two visionary literary magazines, Poetry East-West and Creative Movement. So Don't Call Me Indo-Anglian reflects not only through ideas but also through stylistics the question of identity in the post-colonial writers and the conditions faced by the colonial countries, the newly freed colonial nations and the search and formation of their identities and their search for acceptance among the mainstream writers are in the mainstream world. So this question of identity, which is the most controversial or which is the most important aspect of post-colonial writers is reflected very strongly in this poem. 